Okay. So let's turn now to our other formula. I like to think of this as the responsible borrowing formula. And the reason that I call it the responsible borrowing formula is because it answers the question, how much can I afford to borrow? So, and I'm guilty of this myself, so I'm not judging anybody, but I think what we tend to do as consumers is we go shopping before we answer the question of how much we can afford. And then we're like, oh man, I really like that thing. Let me fi figure out how, ca how can I afford that, right? And then you're tying yourself in knots to figure out how you can afford this thing that's actually out of your budget. So from my perspective, the responsible borrowing formula starts with three things, uh, two of which are the same. Number one, you need the APR. Number two, ugh. you need the length of time, which is the number of months again. But the third thing this time is not the amount of the loan, it's the amount of the monthly payment. So what you do is you say to yourself, okay, my car's a piece of crap and I need a new one. And I think I can get this APR from my bank and I wanna have this done in four years. And looking at my budget, I think I can squeeze out $200 a month. Well, that you can then use in the PV formula to generate your top line number and that is what you should be shopping for. Right? If it comes out to $10,000, then you shouldn't be looking for a $15,000 car. If it comes out to be $15,000, you shouldn't be looking for a $20,000 car. You should be looking under that number. So that's why I call it the responsible borrowing formula, because ideally, this is how you would start the process. And in the case of um, bank uh, mortgages, this is how the process starts. You get a pre-approval amount. You go and talk to your bank and you say, you answer a bunch of questions, right? Uh, what are your, what's your credit card debt? What's your income? What's your blah, 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 blah. And they put all the numbers and they crunch it out and they say, okay, this is the number that you're pre-approved for. You should be shopping under that number, right? So basically there's some complicated calculations that are going on, but eventually they're gonna use the PV formula to come up with this number. So you can come up with the number before they do so that you don't have to listen to the bank's answer for how much you can afford to borrow. So let's see how it works in a sample question. What are we shopping for? Car, house, student loan? Car, Car okay. Um, and needs a new car. He can afford, how much can I afford every month for my car? Don't go crazy, I'm not paying $500 a month for a car. 350 a month. Oh geez, okay, 350. He wants to be done in how many years? Just to give you some perspective, car Six. loans, go anywhere from three to six years is even such a thing as a seven year uh, loan now. I mean, especially with really expensive cars, you might get a seven year loan, but six years. Is that what you said, Roderick? Yes. Okay, now my APR of course is gonna vary based on a lot of factors, but if we just look up our loan APR we could get a sense of what is on offer out there. Okay, here we go. And you could even make it a little more personal by getting into your credit score and, and using that to kind of figure out. 
and these are, um, if you heard of the subprime crisis, no, what happened to that beautiful little table? No, never mind. Um, those are just, that, that's a name for a category of lender. A subprime is the lowest end of the market where there's the most risk involved for the banks. So anyways, you get a sense there of your interest rates. Let's say you could get a 4.56%. Also notice something important here. Banks will give you a better APR for a new car than for a used car. Right? That might be a way to trick you into buying a new car because they're like, oh, it's really important that you buy a new car. I don't know why they care that much about it. Okay, so what am I gonna do here? Let's say I'm prime. Could I, am I gonna get a new car or a used car? Because it looks like I'm gonna get a different APR based on that. New. Okay, so 4.56% is my estimated APR. How much can he afford? So again, this is the responsible borrowing formula. And what you're trying to do here is just write the formula out. It's the same thing as the P, as PMT equals PV open parenthesis, and then you got three things to put in there. You're welcome to send me a picture if you want. What's the first part? Um, 0 0.0456. Okay. Is there more coming? Um, oh, I can do some more. That was the rate. Well, that's the that's the annual rate. Don't forget we All need to by 12. Yep, we need to divide by 12. Same as the PMT formula. Okay. Okay. And then the next part. Six years. 72 months. Yep. And then the third part is not how much we're borrowing, but how much we're paying every month. And again, we put a negative sign in front of it. It doesn't really matter if you don't put a negative sign in front of it. Um, it'll just turn the answer negative. Okay. So that's what you should have got. If you actually typed in an Excel, you can afford to borrow about $22,000 under that program. So when you're shopping, you're going out and you're looking for something that's under $22,000. Okay. So I just want to get something straight or ask a question maybe. Um, so the PMT is just, if you don't have like the end number, like how much you need to pay and the PV is what you use if you already have a monthly payment. Right. Two, two different ways of approaching the same topic. The topic is I want to borrow some money. PMT, you start with how much you want to borrow and PV, you start with how much you pay every month. And then they just get the answer to the other guy. PMT gives you the payment and PV gives you the total amount you're borrowing. And they can both be useful in your thinking about going into a loan situation. If you're already in a loan situation and you want to pay off your debt, you want to know how much it's going to cost, that the PMT PV moment has passed. This is before you borrow the money. Okay. Now let's just add the, yeah, Roger, go ahead. I was going to say, could you say one more problem with the uh, PMT? PMT? With PMT? Uh-huh, sure. Yeah, I've got one coming up here. Let me just do the extension on this. How much would he pay total? And how much of that is interest? Because we can apply the same two questions here that we did to the PMT situation. 
Remember, to get the total, you've got to figure out how much is he paying every month and how many months is he going to do it for. To find the interest, you're just looking at how much he pays total minus how much he borrowed. So would you do um, 350 times 72? Good. $350 a month, doing it for 72 months, that's six years. It's $25,000. Okay. So what was the cost of the loan? How much did it cost for Ben to borrow the money and pay it back at $350 a month? Looks like about $3,000, right? Yeah, I got $3,189.68. Yep, sounds good. Because you're taking what you paid total and you're subtracting off what you borrowed. And you're assuming that the borrowing was the 22,132. That's probably not what would happen because once you set that number, you go shop for something, it's gonna be less than that. It's not gonna be exactly that much. Maybe you found a $22,000 car or a $21,000 car or something like that. In terms of cars, you know, I, I don't have a lot of experience. I bought two cars in my time. My first car, you know, it's classic situation. You just go to the dealership, you're like, I'm not gonna look around. And you walk out with a car because they just will not let you go. And they're like, Oh, buddy, we got a good car for you. What do you need? Hey, we have it. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm kind of thinking that. Man, I'm going to get you in this car today. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. He's like, yes, sir. I lived with two bankers, uh, guys that worked at credit unions, and they both told me that I overpaid for the car. <clears throat> so I recommend that if you are going to show up at a car lot, you've done a little bit of work ahead of time, right? Because if you show up at a car lot, the idea is already in your mind. You're thinking, oh, I kind of need a new car. I'd like to see what's out there, right? And you don't, if you've never been there, you don't understand the pressure that you're going to feel and, and how they're going to really play on that emotional desire and how fun it is to have a new car. And it's going to solve your problems. And the second time I bought a, a car, it was a used car, but that was a used car. Um, second time I bought it, but I went through CarMax and I shopped online to kind of pick what I was interested in and, you know, look at what was available um, and then went and, and did it. But in neither case did I do the responsible borrowing formula because, you know, just it's not how we think. It's hard to think like that. Okay, Roger, do you want to do another PMT problem? I would say this is a good... Yes capstone situation. This is similar to what you might see in a test. Now, there's actually, it's kind of a curveball situation because there's a lot of information provided here. There's two answers to this because there's enough information provided to attack it two different ways. So see if you can think about the PMT and the PV formulas and get the right information into place. So you're trying to write there's two different ways you could do it. You could do it with PMT and you could do it with PV. And then- I'm gonna uh, try it with the PMT first. Yeah, go ahead and try to write it as PMT. So whichever way you're writing it, you're gonna start with the uh, interest rate, 0 0.0525 divided by 12. Or 5.25% divided by 12. Both of those are good ways of writing that. Okay, then what comes next? The 36 months. Yep, so in both cases, 36, because that's how many months, how many payments I'm gonna make, she's gonna make, okay? And this is where it, it changes and it differs, right? There's two other numbers. So you just have to be clear in your mind about which one is going in which place. For PMT is 9,800. Very good. 
and that's minus no. 10. So to answer the question, is, is it going to work? You know, what, how do these numbers answer the question in different ways? Or is it the same answer? What's confusing me is how would you put that in the calculator? You don't. Oh. You, you can't. This is not a calculator thing. This is an Excel thing. Oh, okay. That's what's been throwing me off. I'm like, hmm. Okay, I get it. Yep. So if we have an exam, we have to pull up an Excel. Uh, no, in, in an exam, you'd be asked a multiple choice question. You would be asked to type in what you would put, um, but you're not going to be asked to actually do the calculation because the, they weren't written with the idea that you would be using Excel because not everybody has access to Excel on their computer. So can she afford this loan? Is it, is it, Yes, she could afford it. Okay, Roderick says yes. I don't think so because she's. Um... Oh wait, I think that she can. Yeah. All right. This is answering how much you would need to pay per month, and that's within her budget. Two ninety four eighty two is less than 300 she can afford to pay 300 so she can afford to pay 29482 this is how much she can borrow and since the car is less than that she can afford to borrow 9800 yeah good roderick okay that's tricky because there's more information than you need for any one of the equations so you got to kind of sort through what's useful for which one 